Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for hopping on today. I figured we would get started. I know there are a couple individuals who are still trickling in, but we'll, we'll get started and uh, get the ball rolling. We know you have super busy schedules, so we really appreciate your time. I'm Julia Whipple, Director of Marketing at Blue Ten, and just wanted to quickly say a few words before passing, passing the um, webinar over to the email team. First off, uh, the webinar today is Special Weapons of Email Marketing, and Ryan Austin, our Director of Email, will be presenting. Uh, we try to host these webinars about once a month, uh, so keep an eye out. Uh, they're usually related to, or they're always related to, digital marketing, and topics will include uh, Search, email, social, content strategies, you know, any any updates in the web development world, brand strategy. So, you know, we really are trying to get a, a, a mix in there of different webinar topics. And we would love to hear your feedback as to what topics you're, you're most interested in. We're actually going to send an email after this webinar and you can submit any topics that you'd like to hear from over the next couple months. But um, in terms of today's webinar, a few quick notes. Uh, we would love to hear from you. So if you have any questions, please feel free to use the chat or questions box that you notice in the webinar dashboard panel. Uh, and I'll be monitoring uh, both areas throughout the webinar and we'll interject Ryan with whatever pops up. So, so please feel free to use that liberally. And um, additionally, I will send you any links that are pertinent uh, through the chat box, so keep an eye on that as well. Otherwise, I think we can go ahead and get started, and I'll pass it over to Ryan. Thank you, Julia. Yeah, definitely. So again, yeah, thanks for attending uh, today's Blue Tent webinar, um, focusing on special weapons of email marketing. Um, so first, I actually want to share with you the uh, what we consider our most important special weapon, which is our email team, uh, consists of four project managers, and we all work really closely together. We're all sitting here in the same office and same cube and um, collaborate together quite a bit. So the team uh, is myself, Brian Austin, uh, Eric Taylor, Meredith Marshall, and Reagan Hahn, and we uh, we make up about 25 years of email marketing experience, and not just email marketing experience, a uh, combination of years, but also about 25 years total with Blue Tent. That's a combination of years. But uh, yeah, so again, we, we kind of uh, call ourselves the special weapon of Blue Tent email marketing. But uh, what I'm going to be featuring today is just one of our email products, um, which is what we call Blue Tent. Uh, ACE Builder, and you can see here we have a bunch of ACE email products. Uh, ACE stands for Automated Customized Email, and the one I'm going to be featuring today is the ACE Builder. If you want to learn more about our solutions, email solutions, you can always come to our website and services and email marketing and uh, check out each page. Um, also on the ACE Builder page, you're going to see some of the stuff on this page, a little more detail um, in this webinar, but you can also check this page out afterwards. So Ace Builder. Ace Builder uh, comes with a bunch of different tools, and that's what I'm going to be focusing on is how all these tools come together to make Ace Builder and really kind of produce uh, the special weapons of email marketing. So Ace Builder is actually our uh, email software. Um, I'm going to be demoing out of our actual Blue Ten account. So Ace, this is Ace Builder here. Um, what it is is actually uh, email marketing software actually built by email marketers for email marketing. Uh, built and engineered from the ground up, and uh, this is what we use. So it's very similar to Concept Contact or MailChimp, but this is Blue Tent's version of, of that software. I'm going to start off with just creating a campaign, um, and then after that, I'll go into some reports and show you how we report on all these, and then I'll go into some lists and subscribers and segments, and then show you kind of some other special weapons we use to kind of pull it all together. So uh, this is what it's all about, creating campaigns. So I want to kind of show you how we go about that with this software. Um, so once I'm in here, I want, you can easily hit create a new campaign. There's basically four steps to creating a campaign. First step is kind of your campaign settings, uh, content, choosing your recipients, and then scheduling it for delivery. Uh, this first section, just naming your campaign, um, is really uh, uh, for your references uh, and, and reporting. The other kind of cool part of naming your campaign is this will actually follow you to Google Analytics. What we've done 
with this special weapon is integrate it to Google Analytics. So those of you that use it, you don't have to tag your links and any link on your email is tagged with a source, a medium, and a campaign on the back end. So here in a minute, uh, once we get the reporting, I'll show you how this follows you through to Google Analytics. The next step is um, a subject line. Um, and you know the importance of a subject line. So you actually saw um, ours. I'm going to do uh, just something similar to this. So maybe uh, there's a flash sale I'm working on. So I'm going to do get ready flash sales coming soon. So building anticipation. I'm sure you're all aware of uh, the importance of the subject line. Next up is choosing your from name and your reply to. This is actually part of uh, a pretty important step for us when we do setups. Um, this is uh, as a drop down menu. We actually set it up as authentication. So we tie your email address to this software. And again, another special weapon with this software. It's for deliverability. If you haven't heard of it, it's uh, authentication. And uh, I can go into that in depth uh, later on, but I want to keep moving here. So really, this first part is just kind of naming your campaign and your subject line, choosing who it's from. The next is to choose your template. And again, I'm demoing uh, Lutent's account, so you can see uh, these are all actually emails that we sent. So the nice part of choosing your template is you can choose something that you've already created. So if you've put time into it and you want to rework it, it's easy just to grab an email that you've created before and, and repurpose that. I'm actually going to choose a template from scratch. I've actually loaded two templates that I've created just recently for two new clients, uh, a real estate and a vacation rental. So I'm actually going to start with a vacation rental. So this is our ACE builder, and this is where you build your campaigns. So we start off by uh, mirroring your website, uh, carrying over your branding, your logo, and this is all done in code, and it's custom to you. And then we build these content regions. So then you can choose these regions to build an email. So I'm just going to choose a few and build a quick email. So I'm going to grab maybe a full width image, maybe a headline. Actually, I'll just add some text here. Maybe I want a headline up top, so let's do that. So call to action here, so I'm going to add maybe three buttons of call to action. There's a quick postcard, so let's get some properties in there. And what you're seeing here is just kind of a placeholder. Um, so I'm going to divide this. So it's not uh, text, or when we build this out, we have to have placeholders. So all these images and these texts are just kind of there to uh, get you started. And then you come in and you edit all this. So let me add maybe three properties here. So you can see quickly by doing the drop down menu uh, of content, I can easily plug this in. And you know, a lot of our templates kind of have this kind of award winning theme to it, but they'll all be different and um, branded specifically to you. So going through Blue Tent and going through this setup process, we really work to brand this towards you. Um, to edit any of, it, any of this stuff, each section has its own edit button. Um, so uh, if, if you're going to edit the headline, you can see changes it on the left, changes it on the right. Um, to edit an image, basically you just got to remove the image and then choose a file to put it back. And there we go. So you can see uh, it's just removing an, ima uh, an image and, and then pulling it. it you, if you couldn't see that on the webinar, I actually chose it from my desk desktop. The text editor works like a Word doc. You can bold anything. You can italicize, make it red, make it bigger. So it really does look like a Word doc. Um, out of the box, out of the template, we're actually following kind of, of a brand guideline from your website. So making a certain font, a certain color. So that way headlines aren't changing colors throughout every campaign you do, but giving the freedom to text like this. We can give clients freedom to, to make any, any text, any color, any font, any big uh, or small. So we can certainly do that. But this client wanted to follow the branding. Uh, buttons are just as easy. Um, Again, everything's all on the left, um, and you can see it change on the right. Links are just as easy. You just edit a link and copy and paste in your link there. 
So once you have this template and you have an idea of what you want to do, it kind of just becomes a copy and paste game from, from your website to this software. So again, super easy to edit. Um, the other kind of nice thing is once you build this and you want to move some content around, uh, basically you just drag and move these around once you have built it. The nice part there, which has saved me a ton of time, I build it, I send a proof, and the client says, hey, let's move that first article to the top. Um, so instead of trying to recreate everything, you can easily move content around. From here, once you got all your links and all your images and everything built out, uh, the next step is kind of a preview. And you can see what it looks like um, without all that editor. From there, it's a matter of defining your recipients. Um, this is kind of the cool part, and I'm going to get to this here in a second. But based in list and subscribers, uploading lists and creating segments, you can easily change or uh, choose a list and exclude another one. So if I wanted to choose our, our main list but exclude current employees, it's easy to choose it and exclude it. The kind of cool part there is let's let's exclude a couple more, maybe some Blue Ten customers and Blue Ten employees. And once you choose that, you get a nice snapshot of what you just built. So the campaign and sender, content, and then recipients. Each section has its own edit button, so you can go back and edit the content um, and, and campaign and sender and then recipients. Here in the recipients, it, it gives you a breakdown. It shows that you chose 4,116 subscribers and excluded a couple groups, 623 and 6, and it actually ended up being 629 excluded, which gives you a total right there of 3,487. So it really breaks it down and shows you who you're sending to, almost a full proof. The next step is to send a proof. Um, you can always, it always defaults to the last five people you send a proof to, um, or you can uh, just put as many people in here as you want. Once you've done a proof and you got approval, uh, the next thing is to schedule it. Um, so we actually break it down, and we never recommend sending now. Uh, email marketing, you can never go back after you send it. Uh, so we always recommend scheduling it. And the cool part is we actually give you five minute intervals. Uh, so you can be creative and send it 15 minutes after 2 instead of right at 2 o'clock. Uh, this part's actually really cool, too. We actually offer a confirmation email. Um, so if you're not on your segment or some clients don't want to skew their reports, but they want to know when their email goes out, so you can sign up for that. And it's kind of cool because here's, here's what the email will look like uh, once it goes out. It says your campaign has been sent. Uh, it gives you the title of it. And then we give you links, and I'm going to get to the world view. It's a really cool report. And then we also offer a uh, iPhone report, so you could easily download that. So you, hey, that's where, uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, we just got a great question. When, okay. when trying to schedule your newsletter, how's the, when's the best time to send, and how do you decide that? Great, great question. And uh, another secret weapon to identify best time and best day. So yes, I'm going to get that's in our reporting. So I'm going to show you that um, here. Actually, I'm going to go into that next. We're going to go into reporting. So yeah, great question. I'll touch on that. So again, this, this email is really nice to get. And uh, you know, if you schedule something, you forget about it. At least you get a confirmation email, and, and that's uh, done right here once you schedule it. So I'm actually going to go back. Not like I want to send that to our our guests. So. That's as easy as it is to uh, build a campaign, um, some pretty cool stuff. So let me go back in there and edit it and show you a couple other things I've done that this client requested. And it's kind of endless with what you can do. So the client requested, well, in this template, sometimes we want our navigation and sometimes we don't. So I made it to where you can easily get rid of that or you can add it back, super easy. Uh, the other thing the client wanted was uh, a search bar. And this is kind of tricky email marketing. You can't make these be an actual search. Um, but I made it to where it's on every template. We've seen great success with this and kind of tricking people to think they're going to search from an email. Uh, but some, sometimes they want it and sometimes they don't. So it's easy to add or take away. So a kind of cool thing there. Um, the next one I want to kind of show you template-wise is the kind of cool thing is I'm editing this and I can change my template at any time. And actually, I don't know what's going to happen when I change it to a crazy different template that has nothing to do with anything, but we'll find out. Yep, it didn't like it. So I'm going to get rid of all this stuff and start over and show you some cool things with this one. So I'm just going to kind of add, add some stuff back here to get an email going. Text. 
And this one's cool. It's a broker one, so they co-broke, uh, do real estate together. So I actually created it where we can have a double signature, or you can do a single signature. So this is great for real estate. Uh, one thing they wanted to do is have different options for their header and their logo. Um, so we gave them um, uh, just their normal Douglas Elman uh, logo, and then we gave them an option to do kind of the, the just their team logo. And then they wanted one where it was their team logo and the Douglas Elman. So kind of a cool feature there where they can swap their header and their logo out. And then they also wanted a, a navigation bar. So a, a really cool feature to have one template, but you can actually make different headers out of it. So all this is coming from clients' wants and needs and kind of deciding what is their best fit on their template and then adding different elements to it and really kind of getting the client specific to what they want. Um, and again, there's your preview. So that's all um, about creating an email and uh, testing it and then uh, scheduling it. One other so, secret weapon that we have, mm -hmm, go ahead. Ryan, we had one more question about the scheduling a webinar, I mean, um, scheduling a newsletter and why you might not just hit send. Great question. Um, I kind of train my clients into thinking like that. Um, one is you never want to rush email. So if, oh my gosh, we got to get this out, we got to get this out, that's where mistakes happen. Uh, so take your time when you're building it, click on every single link, and then it's nice just to kind of walk away from it. For you can never go back. Um, but if you're ready to go, there's nothing wrong with just hitting that send button. One more step that I wanted to show in email or in creating a campaign is another kind of secret weapon. It's an A-B split test. And you can kind of do a lot of different things. Uh, for those of you that haven't heard that term, it's basically creating a, a, a testing variables. So testing variable A or B and seeing what happens and then sending out the winning version based on whatever you want. Let me build it out and it might make more sense. So you can do subject line or front name or email content and email content is really fun. So is my specials above or below? Um, is it this link or this link? And I'm going to keep it simple and just do um, subject line. So this is a fun office thing. You think 10% off. Um, 10% off your next vacation is a winning subject line. Uh, your colleague disagrees and says a dollar amount is going to catch their eye, so $200 off your next vacation. And this is very simple. So who, which one's going to get the most opens is what I'm going to shoot my A-B split test for. So once I define my A-B split test, I've already or chosen my recipient, so now I'm going to go define what it really means. So basically, an A-B split test is going to say, okay, subject line one is going to go to 25% of my list, 871 recipients, and B is going to go to 25%. The one with the winning open rate, and I'm going to do it off of open rates, the, the one with the most open rates will go to the remaining 50% of the list. Um, it, it's a really just easy thing to do, and email is really all about testing. So this is a kind of a secret weapon to understand what's working, what your recipients are after. Does a percent or a dollar get more clicks than opens? And again, you can do some really cool stuff. I'm just doing an open right here, but you can do total clicks or a specific link. Um, so kind of a cool, cool hey, option Ryan. here in creating creating a campaign. Yeah. On the A/B testing, how do you figure out where the sweet spot is for what size um, sample you you should send to? We I noticed you put it at 25 percent. Is there um, is there you know a target area that you you um, you like to have that percentage at or? Great question. So it, it's really testing, and it's really up to you. So the other side of it is you know how much how much of your winning version do you want to get the awesome subject line or the awesome email with the awesome content? There, there's no recommendation there. And it really, from a consulting side of the point, I would just say just do some testing. What I would probably do is test it to its fullest, to a 50%, and then scale that back as you do more. There's no harm in doing A-B split test, and there's no harm in scaling it up or down, so it's really up to you. 
The next thing I'm going to dive in, which is a really cool special weapon of ours, and it really, as an email marketer, it, it helps me judge the effectiveness, and, and it comes down to reporting. So I'm going to go and just grab one of our bigger sins here. And every one of your campaigns, actually, let me back up once. Every one of your campaigns here are going to have a report. The other kind of cool thing is if you did a bunch of re emails in December and you wanted to get kind of an average open rate of December or January, you can choose four campaigns or ten or just that month and you can get an average open rate, click through rate, and, and bounce rate. So you can see kind of an average across multiple campaigns. I'm going to dive into a specific campaign and look at all the reports there. So again, each campaign gets all these reports on the right. I'm going to kind of quickly go through them, but take my time too. Um, this first one is a snapshot. Um, it shows open rate and click-through rates and bounces, and it's, it's, it's a true snapshot of the effectiveness, not in detail, just kind of the, the basics. You can view the campaign from here. You can export this report into a PDF. And from here, you can actually see the list it was sent to. Uh, we, we sent this to three different lists, so it's actually going to give us another report over here. The cool part of the list and segments, so if you chose three different lists, it'll actually give you a open rate and a click-through rate or non-open based on the list and the segment that it was sent to. So kind of a cool report there. The next one is recipient activity, which just goes to show uh, who many, how many people opened it and how many people clicked. So th this is our internal uh, email demo on webinar. Uh, it's actually the first one you guys got. And, and Kara, our, our team member, she opened it 94 times. That's just very active. Uh, and you can see just people who opening it and clicking it and see your, your top actives. Uh, and then we break it down into opens and clicks and unsubscribes so you can see that in tabs. The next report is a link activity and overlay. So this is kind of backwards and it shows you which links people clicked and who clicked them. So this isn't a great example because we have a ton of, uh, we don't have a ton of links here, but the other kind of cool part, as a designer, I, I like to look at the overlay. Um, so we can see where people are clicking and where people aren't clicking. So if I had a navigation down here, are people clicking on it or are, are they not? And this is great for me because if I design it a certain way, I want to make sure that it's headline this one, the image, or the button. Where was the call to action really drawn to? And it, this is just email marketing at its best, knowing, okay, always link your headlines, always link your images, because someone's going to click on it. And this report just shows where people, and it's a great visual. I've also used this a lot to kind of identify what recipients are after. So I had a client that was doing a blog uh, email over and over, and we had a navigation that had specials in it, and that was always the top click. So by identifying their top click with specials in their navigation, we started putting specials in their blog email, and sure enough, we saw uh, an uptick in revenue just from their blog emails. So kind of a cool report to visually see what's working and what's not. We also offer a top five. And again, this isn't really that helpful in this email, but you can quickly see where your top five clicks are. So a pretty cool report there. The next one is, we didn't do it on this one, but it's a social share and informing. If anybody forwards or shares this your newsletter on Facebook, it'll show who did it here. Uh, the world view is really fun, um, and, and this is why we put this in the uh, your email's been sent email, a, a link straight to your world view. This report is a live report. Well, all the reports are, but this is a live report that's fun to watch. Um, it's a map of where people are opening it. The greens are opens, and the blues are clicks. And I, I'll literally sit here and just watch these uh, for a couple minutes, not forever. And just kind of the first fun part is just the first five minutes of watching people open it and click. And they'll literally kind of just drop out of the sky. Um, I'm going to show you how we use this data once I get the segments. But you can, you know, it's not just a fun report to watch. You can use this data based on location. So if you wanted to do a drive to market versus a fly to market, you could say, give me everybody who opened the email within 100 miles of our office, and there's your drive to. Um, so I'll show you how we do that segment here in a bit. The next report is opens and clicks over time. Uh, this, this answers that question, or it gives you an insight to the question that Julie had asked me, when's the best day and when's the best time to send it? So of course, we send it on the 22nd, and we're going to see a huge spike when we sent it, but then we'll see it kind of drop off. So then what you do is kind of look at the next day. So the next day, when did people get engaged with it? 
and there's a decent spike at 9 a.m. and certainly trickled off in the afternoon, but it picked up again at noon. So I would say, you know, a lot of people, it's either on 9 a.m. for this list or kind of uh, right after lunch. Um, so it's a cool report to see when people are opening it. And I'll use it um, to, let me kind of grab a different campaign that's a little further out. We might go back to that link overview. So if I go back to open the clicks over time, so now I can go back. Okay, we sent it in November. And what I like to do is kind of see where it dies off and then it picks back up again. So then I'm going to look and see what November 30th was. Was it a Saturday or a Tuesday? When did it pick up steam again? And then when it did, I want to go into that day and see, okay, well, there's our, there's a mid-afternoon group again. So kind of a cool report to see when people want to open it. And that's what all this reporting is really kind of doing for you is to give you an insight to what your recipients want, the click, the links they're clicking, uh, the you know the time of day they're opening it, and, and then uh, this one, the next report, email client usages, is what are they opening it on, and this this is super important for me and my team because we do a lot of uh, design work, and, and you know it's a big part uh, of Blue, the success of Blue Tent is knowing that. Um, we this is actually a little lower than average, um, but we see about a 40% in vacation rental on just an iPhone, and about a 50 to 60% on iOS. Um, so it's important to know what it opens on, even Outlook. And I'll show you kind of how we do that. So we actually take that pretty seriously. We take all we build all of our uh, emails in code, and then we test it in. in in a browser testing, this 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 is one of our designers' special weapons, um, but it, you you reap the benefits from it for sure. Um, so let me kind of bounce out of here and show you how I design an email if I can, maybe. There we go. So this is Dreamweaver. It, it's uh, code, and this is how we build emails. Um, you can see this is the one that we were looking at with the co-brokers and whatnot. There's the three headers, and once I put this into our software, it makes it so it's all drop down. And again, we're total email nerds, and we build this in a specific way. That way, we know that Outlook or uh, iPhone or Gmail is going to render it a certain way. So coming back here, I dump my code in here, and it gives me a report on all your Apple Mails, uh, all your iPhones, and and um, mobile devices, and then all the web base, so Gmail, Yahoo, Outlook. And, and again, knowing what it open, opens on um, from this report gives you insurance to, to know that it does look good. We, we test every campaign we do, and we share it with a client. And some of the harder browsers to, to design for are actually uh, Outlook. So Outlook 2007 is notorious for kind of doing some funky stuff with our code, and not just ours, just anything from constant contact to MailChimp um, to just doing anything. So doing email marketing for Bluetent for the last decade, I've understood what Outlook does and why it does it. So you can see right here, it's doing something weird to this uh, event box. So we were able to go back and identify what, what it's doing. But if we move on to another browser, it's still doing it in 2010 and there it looks okay in 2011. So if I was only testing it in 2011, I wouldn't have caught that issue. Um, so we, we definitely really take that pretty seriously and make sure it looks like looks good everywhere. And then the kind of cool part is, what does it look like on an iPhone or an Android? And where's the difference there? And we actually build for that. So you'll see we actually increase the font size on a phone number on an iPhone. Uh, we hide the navigation. We stack things, uh, and we really make that iPhone experience the best it can be. Um, you know, again, with about 40% people opening on an iPhone, uh, very, very important. So we take that pretty seriously, and uh, and share this with the clients after we design your uh, template. The final report here is a bounce summary. So we don't make it to every inbox, and we tell you why. Um, a lot of it's going to be a DNS failure. So we see that's a pretty common one. That just means they're having some issues or something's wrong with their DNS, and we report on it. Um, bounces are, there's soft bounces, so there's email 
uh, a soft bounce is basically there's an inbox to go to, but we couldn't make it there. And then a hard bounce means there is no more inbox. They canceled their Yahoo account, um, or they they canceled their um, local internet or their Yahoo. So any of these that don't have an inbox to go to, the software automatically removes it, and we we report on that. Hey so, Ryan. Mm-hmm. We had a, a, a really, um, really insightful question. Have we seen a decline on engagement when the templates for email are responsive, but websites are not? Great question. So what we're looking at is at all these reports are, is just what happens in the inbox. So your great open rate in, on an iPhone, great open rate in Outlook, rendering, everybody's clicking. Uh, we can even uh, set a report uh, for how long it was open in the inbox. But again, that's all inbox. So now the next part is so big to us, and it goes back to creating the campaign of when you create a campaign, you name it here, January newsletter. The next big part for us is Google Analytics. So tracking emails in Google Analytics is gonna answer that question. So if we saw time on inbox at a high rate of 20 seconds, and a bounce rate or a time on site really low based on email marketing here, you that would answer your question, am I, am I losing engagement if I don't have a responsive? Just kind of digital marketing without even seeing reports, I would say yes. And there's so many articles about this saying, you know, it's all about the user's experience. And I guess, you know, you could answer your own question if you're getting a 40% average on an iPhone they click through and they can't engage on your website, they're, they're more than likely the whole experience is kind of shot. So to answer your question, it's all about reporting, all about Google Analytics, tying reports together. And again, that's kind of a special weapon of email marketing, knowing what it's doing in the inbox, but, but not only there, but also on site. And we take the on site very seriously. So I'll kind of finish the reporting talk here and dive into Google Analytics now. And then, Ryan, we had one more question on the list that you had up there mm -hmm. uh, and segmentation. So one of the questions was how to or um, and or, you know, is it appropriate to resend to unopened recipients? Okay. Yeah, great question. And I and. So there, there's a couple things there. So I'm going to come to lists. So there's some really cool stuff. I'm actually going to build a new list, and then I'm going to show you how to segment that list, all based on some data we have from a property management software. So I'll come back here. But to answer the uh, non-opens, 100%, uh, even a non-open, uh, non-engaged. So did they even click? Um, you know, when you do a non-open, it, it's usually the subject line. So if you do a resend to the... There, you know, 60% who didn't open it, change your subject line. Or maybe do an A-B split test to the non-opens. Uh, so I'll show you how a segment, it's so easy to create uh, for non-opens. And I'll come back to that. Um, but to answer your question, yes, it, it, that's a great campaign to do, resend it to non-opens. You want to be a little careful there of how much you do that. Um, the worst thing you want to do is invade somebody's inbox so much that they just unsubscribe. But that's all kind of email marketing theory of how much do I really send and who, who do I send it to? Is it once a day or once a week or once a month appropriate? So, But yes, I'm gonna show you how segments and, and doing segments like that are really easy. So kind of to finish the, the reporting side of things, Google Analytics. So we, again, we, we track it with three things. We track it with source and medium. Um, so you can see this is a, a report of the last 30 days and we can easily see where email marketing lies with all their direct traffic. So what I'll what I like to do is go into Google Analytics and just see all traffic. So I'll go to acquisition, all traffic, and then I like to go to source and medium because that's kind of where I'm tracking it. And then I can see organic and direct and being in Yahoo and pay per click. But where does email lie in that? And more importantly to me, what's my ROI? So you spent so much in 30 days, how many re uh, transaction and revenue did you get back? Um, so this is one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is by campaign. So this is just all email marketing that went out in 30 days. It's not telling me which one performed the best. So going back to naming it January newsletter, I can now see where all the campaigns and where all the revenue came in. Uh, so, you know, the January news, New Year special had the most 
campaigns. And for this one, it's not a surprise to me. Um, and then again, we're only tracking it for the last 30 days, December 22nd or 27th. Um, so no transaction on our Cyber Monday, but we're still seeing traffic from it. So kind of a cool thing to see that. Um, but again, hey, did, I use this to do uh, specific campaign tracking. Yep. Another really good question popped up, and as we're looking at the revenue in Google Analytics, it's important to remember that this was just revenue generated online. So yeah. one, the question um, was, how do we um, integrate um, with phone calls that are coming in and be able to track those phone calls back to the email so we can test the true effectiveness of each email? You got it. Great, great, great question. And it's something we usually talk about in depth about when we kick off email. How are we going to track this? What are your efforts? What are you doing? So phone tracking, great way. You know, there's there's a bunch out there you can do. For Blue Tent, you know, the big one for our industry is Navis. Uh, you know, we can integrate Navis to these templates. Um, so so easy to do there. Um, and, and then the other one for our industry is if by phone. And, and Blue Tent helps you set all that up. Another one is just to put a generic one on there. So if someone calls but it doesn't follow you through. So Navis and If by Phone, when you click, it's dynamically showing on your website. Uh, another way is just to go buy an 800 number and put it towards email marketing. You're not going to see it the full picture because if someone clicks and calls that phone number, but if someone calls from your campaign, at least you'll get that picture. So yes, this is a great point, Julia. This is all online bookings. We're not seeing any kind of phone tracking. So the, the ones that run Navis, you bet it. I, I track all my campaigns, and there's another huge part of my ROI. And that's what email's about for me as, a, as your, your project manager, showing you've spent this much with us, uh, you got this much. If you spend more, you send more, you get more. So send more email, but we're going to wrap reporting around why we're going to tell you to send more email. And, and, and yes, and so great, great question there on the phone tracking. The last final piece on Google Analytics is, as, as a project manager, I, I always get, I, I, you know, I know from my clients, I know Google Analytics is important, but I never log into it. Um, so I know i got to start paying attention, but I never get in there. I don't have the time. So what I'll do for all my clients is set up a dashboard, um, and it's specific to email marketing. And what it's going to show me is anything you want to see for email marketing. So what, this is a very common one that I set up. Um, I'll do products on here too, so you can see which products got revenue per campaign. I'm not doing it with this one. This one I'm showing kind of what we looked at, the life of all email marketing, the campaigns that outperformed them with revenue, the, the campaigns that drove kind of the most traffic, what pages drove the most traffic. So this is a really cool one that I use to steer my content. Again, what are your recipients after? This one is what they're after. These are the pages that they're visiting the most. So if you look at 12 months of email marketing, what's your top page here? Okay, what's the top three page here? And start giving that content to them. So again, using reporting to do better email marketing and do testing. So this dashboard, actually, we can email it. So we can set it up and have it automated. And this is where when clients don't, don't get in here, I automate this report. Uh, I can set it weekly. Um, typically, I'm going to do it monthly, and I'm going to make make my client get one and have myself get one. And then what I what we'll do is get on the phone, talk about reports, what worked, what didn't. Um, so this is a nice feature that we do for our clients. That again, a special weapon that we do um, that gets you a Google Analytic report on our efforts of email marketing or yours um, right in your inbox, and you never have a log in, log into Google Analytics. So that's all reporting, and trust me, on reporting, that's what I looked at a bunch, and I can keep going and talking on reporting. Um, but uh, with, with time, I want to wrap it up here in about eight minutes so we can do some more Q&A. Last thing I want to do is show you uh, list and subscribers. It's a big part of email marketing. So I'm going to create a new list. I'm just going to call it a test list so we can delete it. Uh, create a new list. I, and I might have moved too fast there. I'm sorry. So list and subscribers is where you go. Right here, you can create a new list. And again, I'm just going to call it test two now. Now I'm going to add my subscribers. So, so I, I got um, a list from a client um, that has bedrooms and amenities. So I'm going to upload that. And then right here, the software is going to say, OK, I recognize name. I recognize email. But what the heck is bedrooms and amenities? So I'm going to, I'm going to tell the software to say, well, let's just make a new text field for bedrooms. 
and let's make a new one for um, amenities. And I'm going to finish adding. It processes it. And then once it's done, in about two seconds, there we are, and there's our list. And now I'm going to go create a segment. So here's our list. We could certainly send every email we want to every 5,000. But what we've seen, um, and if you go to our website, there's a great blog post about this, but segmentation, that's really, the, the you're going to get the most out of segmentation. Um, so actually, I'm going to, and let me explain what segmentation is. So what we're doing is what we've seen over the last three to five years, uh, a really successful way of doing email marketing is not your batch and blast. It is to do the most relevant content to the at the right time. So the right message at the right time gets your right results. So if I keep booking a three bedroom and you send me a five bedroom special, you don't know who I am. And really ultimately I'm going to know you don't know and delete your email or not be as engaged. If all I, I always rent one with a hot tub, you, you know, and you send me a pet friendly, well, I don't want that. I want one with a hot tub. So I'm going to do amenities and I'm going to target everybody with a hot tub and just call this maybe hot tub. So out of my list, it's going to say, okay, 2,842 people out of 5,154 people have hot tub as an amenity. Now I can do a hot tub special. And I know these people have a hot tub and they love a hot tub, so they're more likely to engage, if not make a booking or a transaction. Now I want to say, okay, everybody who's done, rented a hot tub and let's do maybe three bedrooms. Oh, right. We don't offer hot tubs in our three bedrooms. We only offer them in our five bedrooms. So there we go. Five bedroom houses with hot tubs. These people have booked this before. There's a great email to 565 people. And really the kind of cool part is build a really nice long newsletter and then maybe the bottom section or the top section is the one that's going to change based on your segment. So you really are targeting your entire list, but you're going to make one section of that email targeted for a group of people. You put the, a nice hot tub image maybe or a list, you know, your featured listings are all five bedrooms. So a really kind of cool way to do uh, segmentation and easy to do. So, I, you know, some of you are thinking, well, where did I get this information? How do I know someone likes hot tubs or five bedrooms? So, we, you know, we're vacation rental world, um, real estate. I just had a, a three-hour training yesterday on real estate and thought producer of how to use all that information with email marketing. But for the vacation rental, you, you're using a property management system. And whether we integrate it with the software or, or we're, we're doing exports or we're doing consulting or you're doing all this, you get a lot of that from your past guest information. The other way you can do it is on subscribe. So ask them what they want know your top five segments and ask them before they even become a customer. Um, an, another way is um, a, a preference center. Even ask them once they're on your, continue to ask them what they want. Um, so there's certainly a variety of ways to get preferences and do segmentation. Hey, Ryan. We yeah. had um, a great question that if someone books with you and then you don't want them to receive any specials going forward, is there a way to segment them out uh, so that they don't continue receiving, you know, specials for the week that they're arriving or anything like that? Great question. And it's probably the most widely used segment, if you would, um, 100%. So it, it's a matter of running a report, um, a really cool campaign. So book everybody who booked a spring special last year, but not this year. There, there's your group you're targeting. Now give me everybody who has already have a spring vacation. So if I have those two lists, you, you, it's super easy to upload and, and segment. Um, and you saw if I have that information, it's a couple clicks and you got your list and your segment. Uh, the, another really common one is owners. So I'm doing kind of a sensitive email. I don't want the owners to see it, um, that type of thing. Um, so yes, uh, easy to exclude current bookings and actually, you know, if it's a sensitive special, um, we make sure you do that. It's something we ask during production. Um, so kind of the 
the, the last thing is automation. Um, and I'm gonna, this is a, a great, actually, special weapon of email marketing, and you can do some really cool stuff with automation. Um, basically, what that is on the basic level is a welcome subscriber uh, confirmation email. Um, but then you can set up drip campaigns. You can do send this email. If they click this link, send this email three days later. It, you know, if they fill out a preference, send this email. So you can get really complicated and really sophisticated on automation. Um, but to save time, I kind of wanted to finish the next couple minutes on different types of services we offer with, with all these special weapons. Um, and and uh, definitely reach out if you're interested. Uh, I'm always happy to do a one-on-one -on -one demo and answer any of the hard questions. Uh, you know, with the type of services we, we offer, it, it, go, it ranges from full service where we'll do everything for you. Um, we'll build the campaigns, we'll do the content, we'll do everything. Um, there's kind of a tag team approach where maybe you just send us the content and we'll build it out and work through proofs and we're doing editing. Um, when we do full service or that type of work, we're not usually using this template. We're usually using the code. Uh, we're just proficient in it, and it gives us the freedom to kind of do some really cool stuff. If we see a different layout, we can easily do it. Um, but it doesn't mean we can't apply that to the template as well. The other kind of service is, on a tag team level is using the editor. You build it, and then we get in there and spice it up. And after about six months of doing that, we see kind of clients graduate and really take, take off email marketing on their own. And then the ones that are just awesome at email marketing don't need help. Uh, we kind of set the template up, set everything up, give a little training on the software, and then walk away. Um, never, ever walk away, but we do. We allow you to kind of do your thing. Um, we monitor it, so every month we check in, make sure you're sending and all that. But with the kind of self-service or do it, do it yourself, we also highly recommend a, a consulting bucket. So you never are out there, and you always will get our biggest special weapon, which is our team. So definitely, we are always here on every account. And, and trust me, if we did a one-on-one -on -one demo, uh, I could easily take a couple hours. Um, you know, these, these special weapons and showing you how it all works from, from browser testing to Google Analytics um, to, to segmentation. A-B split testing, automation. There, there's so much just involved in, in what you know you would think is basic uh, email marketing. Um, but we really focus on the success and what works and what doesn't. So with that, and Julie, Ryan, I think I want to turn it over to some general questions. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I just wanted to add on to that in terms of the one-on-one -on -one demo. I think it's really important because every business is different and every everyone has um, – you know, their, their own, their own needs. So it's great to hop on with Ryan. He, um, he certainly caters to whatever objectives you're after and how to really create an email campaign that's going to be a, a best fit for you. Um, so we had one more question, Ryan, about, um, which PMS, uh, we integrate with. So I don't know if you want to dive in. Sure. Um, home away solutions. Is where we're where we're standing with that uh, V12, uh, Escapia, Property Plus, so basically home away solutions. From an email perspective, Barefoot then... is uh, Barefoot is another one. Mm -hmm. um, I and I, you know I'm just thinking off the top of my head. Um, I, you, typically, we're I'm going to revert to our CTO um, to to really net you know uh, really to answer that question. We we could integrate with anything. It's it's just a matter of how much development time uh, we want to put towards it. But, our, you know, the vacation rental preferred partners is, is a good way to answer that. Yeah. Um, so I think if anyone else has uh, questions, feel, uh, please feel free to fire them over. Um, oh, so a, gr a great question just came through. I'm happy with my current platform. Can you still help me with it? A hundred percent. And the uh, funny thing is, is I actually end up doing that quite a bit. Um, so I've worked with all the ESPs or uh, email software providers, uh, tons of them, from, from MailChimp, uh, even down to Navis. I, I've helped Navis clients uh, design um, and deploy responsive emails. Um, and that's really the kind of hard part is, you know, you can go to a MailChimp and they have this gallery of templates. Um, but really, email marketing is just as important as a website. So continuing your, your branding guidelines and not just here's one template, 
because it's cute and then here's another one. Um, so yeah, the, the, the branding side of it, I, I've certainly helped out. Uh, the responsive side of it certainly helped out. Um, from vertical response, even content contact and MailChimp. Um, so yeah, we're always, we're email marketing nerds. So give us the challenge and we'll, we'll take it. Another, another great question is what if I have multiple offices and want to have different template designs for each different destination? 100%. So we, if that popped up, and, and, and it has in the past, um, I have a client that actually does real estate, property management, and vacation rental. And they're all three different websites, all three different logos. But and so well, there's, there's two ways to go about that. You can have three different accounts. Um, you know, we'll see that a lot in the real estate. That way it's completely separate. But they all have kind of the same template. Or we can easily put it in to one template. Um, and if you look at the blue te templates, um, when I create a campaign, we, we have multiple templates. And, and, and you know, it, this is a great thing for Julia. She's in here all the time choosing different templates. Um, let me go to templates. And if you, if you get our emails, you're going to kind of see see ones that you've seen before, um, from mind and dying templates to inside the tent to the search beacon if you're a search client. Um, so, so yeah, you can have multiple, as many templates as you want. There's no, there's no end to that. But if you saw, like with the real estate one, what I try to do is give you one template that you can do some really cool things in and almost create like an owner template versus a guest template with one template. Mm -hmm. And so um, we, we did get another question that says, am I limited to the number of template designs? No, uh, so that's all uh, kind of defined in, in a demo like this on a one-on-one -on -one demo. And, and again, if you're interested, I'll take my time with you and kind of go through this. Um, but so what, what happens, um, kind of next steps is we'll do a one-on-one -on -one demo, kind of talk about your needs and, and where you, we think you might fit on a service level. And then we go into detail, like what are you thinking about templates and how can we pull it off kind of with all the best practices but to, in the shortest amount of time because time is money. So there is no end to templates. Um, what we actually see a common thing is, is you'll build a template and then you'll use it for a couple months and then you keep adding to it and you keep building onto it. And your template, in my opinion, should never just be static and that's what it is. That should always evolve. And the fun part is the clients that say, ooh, I got this really cool email from this resort. Can you do that too? And then we brainstorm and then we add it to your template. So again, these regions that I build, are, if I build another region, you just pop it in there, I just pop it in your template and it's there for you the next time. Perfect. So there is no end to templates, you got it. We had a really good question about the pricing structure, which you know um, definitely com comes up all the time. Um, and Ryan, I don't know if you want to tackle that. Um, the question was, yeah. is the pricing structure based on number of emails sent or number of contacts managed? Great question. And, and it varies. And the funny thing is, when I do these demos at the end, that's the, that's the main question. OK, I love it. How much? So it, it definitely varies. Um, on the very basic level, there, there's a setup. Uh, setups are usually 15 hours uh, on the basic level. That gets you the template, that gets you list management, um, training, the authentication, which I didn't go into detail. It's pretty easy to set up, but it's very important. Um, let's see, opt-in process, so a, a form to sign up and a welcome message. It gets you all these little details. So 15 hours gets you a ton of stuff set up. So that's a one-time fee. Ongoing fees depends on the service you choose. So kind of a common one would be three to six hours a month on a full service. You want us to do email marketing for you. Uh, build content or you give us content um, and we're going to build it in code and we get one to three newsletters out a month. Um, so kind of it, it really depends on the segmentation, how much you're sending and who you're sending it to. I guess the big price difference is if you want us to do a lot of the production work or if you have the bandwidth or the team or the skills to do all the production. And when you're using an editor like this, you can do the production, 100%. Um, it's a matter of if you have time to do it and if you want to do it. Um, and really, another, a lot of our clients will start off with doing it themselves and then send us a proof and say, hey, uh, I, I built this go check it out and tell me how it looks. And then I'm going to come in here and be like, yeah, it looks good, but what, you know, just email marketing. 
let's bold this to draw some attention. Let's link this to give them a, a little more attention on on what you know what's in your kind of boring content. So I'll, I'll certainly help clients once they build this. Um, so a full you hit us when you want. So the two pricing there. Um, it's kind of an easy way to say that. Perfect. So basically on a full service, you're paying for our time. And then on a self-service, you're paying for the software. Um, there's a software fee of $100 a month, and that can grow um, based on how much you want to do with email marketing. And then the software fee gets waived if you guarantee us time with a project manager. So that's one recurring monthly fee. The other, Julia, you said it, it really is how much you're sending but not how big your list is. So you can constantly have 100,000 lists but only send 10,000 a month. That's totally up to you. So the way we bulk that out is $10 per thousand a month that you send. So for every thousand you send, um, it, it's 10. Now that can get expensive if you, if you, like Peter Scott, the owner of Blue Tent, always says, send more emails, one a day, keep sending. Now if you get into this volume where you're sending a ton of email, you know, 50,000, 100,000, 200,000 a month, we start to help with the cost on the $10 per thousand. So a lot of these questions on price gets determined on a, a demo and kind of going through the proposal process with the sales team. Sure, so Ryan, real quick, we have one minute left. Um, any other questions about pricing, we're happy to answer separately. Um, but in terms of... Um, so that we, is kind of the... the part. Oh. Sorry, I think we got cut off there for a second. Oh, sorry. Um, so we had one last question. We have one minute to go. So yeah. um, sure. I'm a broker and I have an office full of agents. Can you set it up so each can send and also have unique logins for each agent? Most agents are sensitive with their lists. 100%. That's real estate. That's every real estate. So what you were seeing with this one where there's a co-broker is super rare for us. I, we rarely see it. So to answer your question, 100%, privacy in real estate is huge. This is my list. Don't touch it. My reports don't even look at them. So when you have a, a, a real estate office and you have 20 brokers, 100%, each broker could have their own. You would have login to, you know, the, the owner of the company could have one. Um, and really, we could go even further than that. So to answer the question on a very uh, high level, it, it, it's yes, you can have it so your brokers are private and, and they would have their own logins. Perfect. Um, and, then, so and then, you know, and it's custom to them and their signatures. Um, yeah. So kind of a cool thing, too, is, you know, with this one, you could have the one signature or you can have the one signature. She wanted a signature with a button. Um, so, you know, you can kind of do whatever you want. So, yep, 100%. Cool. So we are just at the top of the hour, um, and uh, I'm just going to run through a, a, a couple remaining um, remaining questions. One was, what if I don't host my site with Blue Tent? Can you still work with us on email marketing? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we're happy to work with you. If you don't, If you don't necessarily host your site with us, that's not an issue at all. Um, another question, which is quite fun, is uh, how is the skiing today? <laughs> Unfortunately, Ryan, okay. and myself, yeah. and I don't think anyone in the office is skiing, but so far so good out here in Colorado. So Saturday and Sunday should be a good day. <laughs> um, but otherwise, we are going to send a copy out of the um, of this webinar. Uh, it'll come in a recording. And then we can also send a couple screenshots, I think, of what you've been seeing today. I know that was a question. Um, so I'm happy to do that right after this. You'll also get um, a survey. We'd love to hear your feedback. And we'd also love to hear, again, if there are any topics that you'd like us to, to present on next. But otherwise, uh, we really appreciate the time. I know I know you all are busy, so, um, so we don't want to run over. But thank you again. Uh, Please feel free to send any questions to um, marketing at blue and we'll we'll tackle those as they come in. So thanks again, Ryan. Really appreciate it. Great. Yeah. Thanks for everybody for joining and look forward to working with you, hopefully. So yeah, and again, hit us up if you have any questions. So thanks for your time. Thanks, Julia. Perfect. Thanks.